Hello there and welcome back to the Closet Historian and back to my sewing room for another project. And today I do finally have the very last project to share with you from my recent Arcana lookbook. And I say recent, but at this point it was a couple of months ago. I did make a new center front closing waistcoat pattern for that video, this vest here that you saw, paired with the teal silk top here. And I was and continue to be rather happy with the way this pattern came out and I'm excited to make a couple more versions in the future. But because this is a rather straightforward design to go ahead and draft and put together, let's jump on over to the blue patterning table of doom and get started. And I begin with my basic bodice block and some alphanumeric paper as per usual. I use my ruler to straighten off a line to work with here. I can line my center up and trace a copy of my front bodice block. Including the darts, we are going to be changing these into a style line today. This is going to have a princess seam on this vest, but the first thing I'll do is go ahead and add on a half inch along the center front. This is going to have a center front closure with a um, placket sort of um, modesty panel behind the closure, so that's how this one will finish as opposed to being overlapped and having a button closure like a normal waistcoat might have, but this is just what I decided for this particular design. And in order to draw in a really nice, smooth, straight style line all the way from the shoulder down to where I wanted it at the waist, I am going to have to shift my dart fullness over a half inch. So I am going to do that first here. Of course, I'm going to be eliminating the dart entirely in a moment here, but I'm going to shift it over a half inch before I do so, just so I can have this nice straight line from the waist up into the shoulder. I will then, of course, eliminate the side dart as well. And this is still my center front, although why I drew an arrow when it's not going to be cut in the fold, no one can truly say. And because this is an outer-ish garment, or rather just something that's meant to be worn over a blouse underneath. I want to give myself a little bit of extra room, so I'm going to bring the shoulder out a quarter of an inch, add a quarter of inch along the side seam as well, and then bring that arm side down, tilt that down a half inch right at the side seam. So hopefully you can see those modifications there. Just slight little extra ease being built in there. And I started cutting this out and realized, oh, I still need to tip the collar up and out on this. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to come in a half inch from the neckline here along the shoulder seam, and then an inch and a half up, curve that down into the shoulder seam, and then I sweep a curve, outward curve, I guess, out into the center front here. And I'm going to actually draw in the seam allowance later to see if that's lying kind of where I want it. Um, this is a very high neckline at this point, although it'll be open along the center front, so that'll allow movement and it won't be restrictive in any way, but it is kind of a grown on collar. It's like a, having a stand collar without actually having a separate piece. So I'm just drawing that seam allowance in here. I'll see where that kind of lands. You can see it's past where my original block neckline would have been, so it'll be perfectly comfortable to have this on. And I almost started cutting these apart before marking in some notches along my princess seam, which is what I always forget to do. <sighs> there we go. Notches are in. Now I can cut this apart. Cut my dart fullness away. We will no longer need that. Goodbye. Same with this dart fullness in the side. Everything's being transferred into this style line, so I will not need these darts any longer. I'll layer this side dart closed, smooth off my side seam, and we now have a princess seam bodice pattern. Though, because I have transferred this into a style line and we need to sew this back together later, I will need to add seam allowance onto either side of this. So let me go ahead and add seam allowance onto this side front real fast to begin with, like so. And I'm just gonna smooth over the very tip of the bust a little bit, but because I took a pretty good chunk off that pointy bit, I will actually need to make this line on the other piece larger so they will still fit together. So I'm going to add in an eighth of an inch right here at the apex. Because I rounded off the bust of this side piece so much, it actually made that, like if you were to measure it before and after, it becomes a little bit longer and therefore to fit back into this front piece, I need a little bit of extra ease along the bust. So I just added one eighth of an inch right in at the apex, the bust level of this piece, 90 degrees across, just adding in a little bit of extra ease over the bust for this center front piece. And that's the kind of bodice pieces of my vest front finished, but I'm going to extend them down below the waist and I'm going to do so using my A-line skirt pattern which I really need to make a card version of this because I do use it quite often anymore. I'm gonna trace the first, I don't know, eight or 10 inches of my A-line skirt front here. I do have the same extra half inch added onto the center front as well. I will go ahead and sketch in my seam allowance along the waist seam for both the uh, skirt and the bodice in a moment here. I'm just gonna add on that same quarter inch to the side seam of the skirt that I have up here on the side front of the bodice. Then I can layer these things closed if I want to. So because this is a relatively straight line and the skirt has a relatively straight waist at this point, I'm going to layer where it would have been sewn together shut like this, just kind of eliminating the seam allowance and making this just extend down from the waist all in one piece, basically. And I will draw in the angle that I want here. You could leave this straight. You could do whatever shape you desire. I'm just going to angle it a little bit down, uh, about one inch down from the waist and then having that angle come into the hem. And I'll continue that same angle up into the style line of the bodice. 
So keep that going. I'm going to make this about six and a half inches long in general, the little peplum portion of my vest pattern. Cut this off, tape it on down here where I needed a little bit more room, like so. Cut off my excess here, and then I'll show you how I cut this peplum piece apart, add seam allowance where it needs to be, all that good stuff. So I'm going to cut this right along where the stitching line would be, just making sure that was correct, and it is. Cut this apart like so, and of course, in order to sew these two pieces back together, say it with me, we're going to need seam allowance. So go ahead and add that on, that way it matches up with the rest of the bodice piece as well. So you can really tell, uh, you would be able to notice if you had forgotten this step, because things would start getting very wonky very quickly. Tape down my floops on the other side of this, just so nothing gets caught in anything and torn, which is always irritating. And then for the rest of this peplum piece, I will need to add seam allowance as well. So I'll go ahead and do that, making sure my waistline matches up. Always truing my pattern pieces and um, lining them up as I go to make sure nothing has gotten too haywire. I'm actually going to add in a tiny bit of flare along this just so that it sticks up away from the body just a little bit. So you can see that right here along this seam, uh, whereas the princess seam is following the contours of the bust, right here over the hips I'm adding just a tiny little bit, probably a fourth of an inch of extra flare along this princess seam over the hips. For the back we're going to make some similar modifications, again adding on our raised all in compassing collar, just tracing that shoulder seam from the front to get that same height out of that, same curve, so it'll line up well. I'll go ahead and add in a princess seam down the back that will line up with the one from the front, and lines up with my back dart here. Again, I need to lower my arm side that half inch, bring the side seam out that same quarter inch, bring the shoulder seam out that same quarter inch, just for a little bit of a stronger shoulder here, and I actually need to bring the center back seam out a quarter inch for the first six inches or so, just angling that out. This does mean I will need to add a center back seam onto this like so. So I need to add half inch along this as opposed to being able to cut it out from the fold just because that collar tilts out away from the back of the neck and back of the back, as it were, to be able to fit over the curves of the body with this particular raised neckline style. So I'll need to cut this out, not on the fold, because we have that extra quarter inch tipped out at the back neckline, which you see me add on other garments using the same neckline style. At this point, all these modifications are pretty familiar to those who have seen me make other things here on the channel. Especially things like, uh, I guess this is pretty similar to the ice dyed summer dress, um, the, summer, the sateen ice dyed dress that I made this year. Similar modifications to the neckline on that one. But as I have cut my style line apart, cut the dart fullness away, I of course needed to add seam allowance, so I've done that here. Then I'll find some spare paper so I can trace my A-line skirt, the top of my A-line skirt back here to be able to draft the back peplum pieces, the back extensions from the waist down for the back of this vest. I'm going to use my front side piece to make sure I have the same amount of flare and angle added on to the side seam here. I added that quarter inch of ease that I have in the bodice down here, but I also just let it kick out a tiny bit um, at the bottom of that so that this flared a tiny bit along the side. Flared a little bit extra, that is. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure this dips down about an extra half inch at the center back as well, just for funsies. I'm calling this my doublet style vest 2023. I'm going to sew half of the back of this shut and leave the little last couple of inches open as a little slit in the back, I guess, for extra wearing comfort, I suppose, if I were to sit in this for a long time. It's not like I would wear a brocade vest, like, on a plane or anything, for long train journeys, maybe, in the future, when I live in a place that has trains, because, of course, in America, we do not have a good Amtrak network. It's nothing compared to <sighs> the trains in Europe, but we all already know I prefer the UK and Europe to the United States, especially for transport reasons, so I won't get into it. I'll go ahead and cut everything out of my brown and teal and copper brocade here, and then I will cut everything out of a lining as well. The only thing is that the lining, I cut most of it out of a rayon lining, and then the front pieces and the top of the back, I did cut out of a coordinating silk taffeta, just because those are the parts that are most likely to be seen for my vest here. And I'll start sewing my first few panels together, the center backs of my pieces, for example. Nice straight, at least straight-ish seams, only slightly angled barely at all. I don't need to worry about my raw edges on these fabrics because they are going to be all encased. This is going to be a fully lined garment, so I'm not worried about fraying or anything like that with these. This is a rayon, or like a viscose lining. I never make a distinction, particularly. Um, both are similar enough that in my brain they go in the same bucket. That's right. Modal, rayon, viscose, potato, potato. I'll just give those center back seams a quick press over here and start sewing the back side panels onto those. Order of operations here. So here's my brown twill lining, lining up my side backs along the center back panel with lots of pins today. It is slippery rayon, 
to, uh, you know, my credit. It's not the most fun thing ever. And you'll notice I am taking my pins out as I go with this particular project, and that is because I'm working with a sparkly Lurex brocade, and these Lurex threads get really sensitive about whether or not your needle is dulled at all, so I'm being extra careful to keep my needle nice and sharp by not sewing over any pins, um, just because Lurex brocade is sensitive. It's something I've learned over time, seeing as I do use quite a lot of metallic and Lurex blend brocades here in my studio. I love a sparkly, shiny thing. It's no surprise, really. I'll do that same step for my brocade layer as well, the outside layer. So attaching my center back and side back pieces along that princess seam, you know, cutting pieces apart, adding seam allowance just so you can sew them back together. But the dark fullness was taken away, so there is a fit reason that that line is there. Although you can just add style lines for style reasons and not fit reasons as well, if you'd like to, which is pretty much what all color blocking is. But I'm going to take my front pieces for both the rayon layer and the brocade layer here. I'm going to mark my notches with pins onto my fabric here. You could also use Taylor's chalk, of course, but it doesn't work, again, very well on Lurex Brocade, so I didn't bother trying. And I'm going to line up the side front peplum pieces with the side fronts and sew those together at the waist. I can't sew these together with the fronts, because the front doesn't have this waist seam. I can't sew the side front panel to the center front panel until the waistline seam is sewn on this, so hopefully that makes sense. Again, with order of operations, it's really about uh, what do I have to do first before I can do the next step. So if I want to sew my front princess seams, I can't do that until that seam line is the same length, and in order for that to happen, I have to have my peplum pieces already sewn to my side fronts. So it's just kind of working backwards. I don't really have to think about that as much anymore just because of how many projects I have made and how long I've been sewing in this way that I do where I um, kind of make my own patterns and don't have an instruction booklet, but I really don't require one anymore. Um, and that happened rather naturally. So uh, I, I wouldn't be intimidated about the order of operations so much if you want to make clothes similar to the ones that I do, I guess. But I'll press open my back princess seams here in the brocade using my clapper to help out with that just because brocade doesn't exactly want to press nicely usually you don't want to melt I don't want to melt the lurex fibers in here they are just plastic in the end so got to be careful and once again before I can sew the side seam of this because the front has its peplum on already I have to add the peplum onto these backs before I can sew that side seam so I'll line up my back peplum pieces at the waist so that I can sew those together Press this curve open, all that jazz. And I'll need to do the same for my lining as well. Sometimes I will construct the entire outside of a garment and then sew the lining at the end, mostly because I've procrastinated cutting out the slippy rayon lining and I put it off for as long as I possibly can. But in this particular project, I was good about things and cut out both the brocade and the lining at the same time so I could work on them at the same time, doing the same set of steps over and over again, batch processing everything between the ironing board and my machine. I am, as always, using my half-inch seam allowance that I added when pattern drafting and therefore is essential to maintain the same over here on the machine, using a size 12 Microtex needle here just for ultimate sharpness here on the machine, and using uh, my Guterman all-purpose thread and 12 stitches per inch as are all pretty standard here in my sewing room. go ahead and press open that waist seam for both the brocade and the rayon layers. Of course, the brocade behaves a little bit better than the rayon does. Rayon lining, so smooth, so soft, so nice to wear. Hmm, quite irritating to work with. This is why this, you can't really tell, has a subtle pattern in it because it is a twill weave, which at least is a little bit more stable compared to like a Bemberg rayon lining, which has a plain weave and is much more annoying and watery and silky to work with. Um, of course, you could have silk lining as well. I do recommend in general, for lining fabrics, if you find them super tedious like I do, go for a twill weave, go for a jacquard lining, something with a pattern in it, a herringbone, a polka dot, any sort of woven pattern in your lining. It'll still be thin and malleable and smooth and all, but it's a little bit more structured just because of the weave um, as opposed to a plain weave, which is just the silkiest and smoothest of all and really irritating, honestly. And speaking of plain weaves that do behave, this is the silk taffet I was talking about earlier for my center front pieces of my lining. I've lined up my notches along the bust, and I'm sewing this into place, my front princess seam for the lining here. I 
but I will need to clip my curves over the bust and at the waist before I can press this seam open. And I'll use my tailor's hand to help me out with that, especially over the curve of the bust here. Now that the back is constructed and the fronts are put together, I can go ahead and line up this side seam. Like so, for both sides, get this lining entirely together. I will need to sew the shoulder seams eventually too, but we're going to leave that for later. Just sew the side seams for now, and I'll go ahead and press those open as well. And then I can set my lining aside and catch up on my brocade layer, doing all those same steps. Again, marking my uh, notches over my princess seam for my front pieces here, like so. That way I can line them up with the curvier side fronts in a moment. Grab one of those. And I can line up my pins with my pins, the notches around the bust. I like to have some anchor points and then pin in between um, because I know those anchor points are supposed to match up. I was doing the pattern drafting myself. I know that they line up. Therefore, if anything in the fabric is a bit wonky, it's because the fabric has stretched, not because the patterning is wrong. Although I have confidence of experience telling me that you might have pattern drafted something wrong if you're new to this, but uh, go double check on the pattern if something seems strange. And if it's fine on the paper, but not in the fabric, then it's the fabric playing tricks with you. Now I'm gonna see how much I can get away with not clipping this brocade layer because again it is more fray happy i am going to clip over the bust a little bit just to make sure that lays flat always err on the side of clipping a curve as i always say um, it's better that your i don't know seam is a tiny bit more fragile because it's not going to get a ton of tension and lays smoothly than to have a bunched nasty wrinkly seam uh, you're not going to wear it if that happens anyways so there has to be a compromise between true stability and laying completely smooth and I'll tell you what, we would definitely get marks off your grade in fashion school if you did not clip your curves. So it's been drilled into me. It's going to be drilled into you if you're hanging out here on my channel. And it was at this point, way too far into the process, that I decided, you know what? I want a little bit of fusible interfacing at the top half of this garment. So this is not the point to do this, but I did, you know, make it work. Uh, I traced a huge basically like wide six inch facing along the very top of my vest here. And I'm fusing on some lightweight fusible interfacing just to help this stay stable up over the shoulders and collar. This is not proper tailoring technique, but it is what I used for this particular vest. In the future, I would just, you know, do this before I started sewing anything, <clears throat> but uh, it worked, you know, all's well that ends well as usual. Now I'm going to go ahead and bag line this, except for not really, because I'm going to start here about six inches down from the center front neckline, and I'll stay about three inches shy of the shoulder seams on the underarms as well. I'm basically constructing this again in the same way I did in that ice dyed sateen dress or my other vest video here on the channel, where you do not sew the shoulder seams until last. So I'm going to bag line the rest of this, the entire bottom hem and like outside edges of this vest, and just leave the shoulder seams alone give them a little bit of a wide berth, and then I'll show you how I finish those up after everything else is sewn together. And of course, this is lined up right sides together, just like any other bag lining, just avoiding the shoulders entirely. This is how I finish most, if not all, sleeveless garments, which I don't make a ton of, as we know, but I might end up making a few more sleeveless garments in the future, especially uh, have the left side have no sleeve because that's where I now have artwork. I have my own sleeve on my arm on my skin. So. so I have a sleeve of floral inks over there that uh, I wouldn't mind showing off a little bit more in the future. I'll just sew everything I just pinned together over here on the machine. Same settings as usual. Sewing around my curves, sewing around corners by leaving the needle down where I need to, picking the presser foot up, turning the project, putting the presser foot back down and keep sewing until I get around corners when I encounter them. But of course I have fewer corners this time as I'm avoiding the shoulder seams. And I will go ahead and clip the curves of the arm side just because they are quite curvy in here. Definitely need to clip these ones. So I'll give those some clips up until it starts getting straight and then I stop caring like so. And of course, all the other corners and curves I need to do. I didn't sew anything of the neckline, the back neckline of this just because it's so shallow anyway. I'll do it later. 
I can then go ahead and turn this all right side out and give it a nice press. You can, while this is still slightly open, get in here and do as much understitching as uh, you feel worth wrangling. I probably could have understitched this bottom hem edge, for example, um, but I wasn't sure if I might do top stitching. I wasn't sure if it would behave without understitching, so eh, I didn't bother. It's probably actually one of my greatest faults is not using enough understitching. I do it when absolutely necessary, and when I feel I can get away with not doing it, I don't. And when it would be more annoying to do the understitching than not, then I just leave it alone because my sanity and uh, the, the will to go on matters too much to me. All right, and my shoulders are all still free, so I can go ahead and fold this all right sides together and sew the brocade layer of my shoulder seams, like so. Just fold everything else out of the way, and I'll sew my shoulder seams at long last, which of course kind of encompasses my collar seam as well in some ways, like so seeing as that collar is all-in-one. I don't think I've done an all-in-one sleeve with this grown-on sort of all-in-one collar yet, so clearly I need to combine the two because two of my favorite things. And once I have that sewn in the brocade layer, I'm gonna turn this all wackadoodle until I figure out how I can line up the right sides of my lining layer as well. Um, there should be enough room in here if you've left yourself enough room, given your shoulder seams a wide enough berth you can go ahead and pin these together, right sides together, and sew those, like so. Clip the curve, especially with that little tip up at the neckline. Press the shoulder seams open for both bits. And then you can actually reach in and choose either the arm size side or the neckline side as the one that you want to sew by machine, and then the other little last bit you'll have to sew by hand. I chose to get in there and go ahead and sew the neckline side of this. So I have this, you know, kind of turned topsy-turvy here to be able to get to the neckline and sew that right sides together. Hopefully you'll see where I am in a moment when I turn everything right side out. Again, try watching my sleeveless facing videos. I have another one here on the channel where I made a sleeveless top. I'll link that in a card here so you can hopefully better understand exactly what's happening. This one's just a little different because I have this collar on here and it's really, um, it's less straps at the shoulder and much more of a full shoulder seam. But same idea, same technique, just a little bit wider shoulder seam. But if I turn that right side out after clipping my curves, you can see that the neckline is all finished now, and the only thing open is this outer edge at my arm side. And I can go ahead and wrangle that into place and press it nicely, now that my back neckline and front neckline are all finished. And the only thing open anymore, the last little edge, is right here at the tip of my shoulder along the arm side, and that's a little straight edge that I can totally slip stitch by hand shut. So I'll just fold that in on itself, half inch, half inch, and I will slip stitch this shut by hand. And then I just have the little front under placket thingy to put on here before I sew my hook and eyes down the center front of this and have it finish over this area. It's kind of just a modesty panel. You don't necessarily need this. I like putting it in and I actually like adding even a little bit of boning into this. You don't strictly need it, but I like keeping my center front as straight as possible. Helps give my figure a little bit of extra structure as well. So I'm going to use interfacing on both sides of this little rectangle. This is just as long as I want my modesty panel to be and uh, about four inches wide. You could probably get away with three inches wide or even less, um, just for this little underlap that will go underneath my front closure on this buddy. Go ahead and stitch three sides of that. Leave the last one open just so I can slip some boning in here. I'll create a couple of boning channels as well. You won't really see this stitching because this is mostly hidden anyhow, and it gets lost in the brocade really easily, so no big deal. Doing whatever I need to on this little placket. First, I will give it a good press into shape, like so. Slip a couple of pieces of boning in there, and then finish off the top. I will hand stitch this shut so it is nice and finished along the top there. Then I can go ahead and position it into place except for, oh, you know, I could stitch this on here really easily and hide the stitching in the top stitching if there were some. So I went ahead and top stitched the entire edge of my waistcoat, mostly so that I could hide the stitching for the placket, but also because brocade can be a little puffy. And so for it to lay a little flatter anyway, I went ahead and top stitched the edges. And again, it gets lost in the brocade, so. It's not even seen very much. And then I can position the backing placket where I want it, stitch that into place, stitching in the ditch along the top stitching to secure that placket down. And then I can figure out what I wanna do for my closure. So on this side, you can see, here's all my top stitching all around the edge. And on this side, I have my hooks. There we go. These are skirt hooks for this. 
I would have preferred to use large hook and eyes, but I was all out of brass or copper hook and eyes and I didn't want to have to use silver ones on this, so I ended up going with antique copper skirt hooks here. You can see I have the bars of the hooks on that placket, so that closes up, but with a little bit of a gap where I sewed on about, you know, a bajillion copper buttons here to make this look from far away like it buttons closed with thousands of little tiny buttons, but without having to sew thousands of tiny little button holes or button loops. So this really is just a life hack way to have buttons all down your waistcoat without having to sew dozens of button holes. Here again is my finished brocade waistcoat from the Arcana lookbook paired with the teal silk blouse here, but I do think I can wear this over various things. And I do have the matching brocade pencil skirt that I can pair with this as well. I hope you enjoyed seeing how this project came together today and thank you as always for watching. I'll be back with more sewing, vintage fashion, costuming, and crafting real soon. So I'll see you then. Bye.